everybody, it's Maria, and today I'm going to talk to you about my March plans. I'm super sorry I had a time for how my voice sounds. We're all sick here, and my husband's out of town for the week, along with me trying to redecorate. It's just been crazy, because that's how life goes, but I'm really excited about my plans. If you are unfamiliar with Middle Grade March, uh, I recommend you follow um, Krista at Books and Jams and Katie at Life Between Words. They are hosting. There are some challenges. I know they're doing some giveaways. They're just, they're just fun people. I like them a lot. So my plans, uh, I don't know if I'll get to all these. I probably won't because uh, I will be reading several of these aloud once my voice gets back to normal. Anyway, <laughs> these are my plans. All right, first up is The Whipping Boy by Sid Fleshman. This one, we're actually part of the way through already. I'm reading this at night with my eldest son who uh, is not as fast a re of a reader, but it's been really fun to sit down with him and work on this. It's kind of a Prince and the Pauper story. It is funny. Uh, it's short, so it's very non-intimidating for kids who maybe don't read really quickly. And it's very action-packed, so I think uh, great for for those action-loving kids. Next up is a classic that I've never actually read, and I know Adam at Memento Mori had mentioned this, at least I think it was him ages ago, The Phantom Toll Booth. This is by Norton Jester. I never read this growing up. Um, I know a lot of people have and really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm excited. I know that there's like a magical land. Oh, Island of Conclusions. Rhyme and Reason. I don't know. It'll be interesting. I have no idea what to expect, but it'll be fun. Next is the childhood classic that I really enjoyed. I re really liked a lot of them, so we'll see. Uh, but this one is Matilda. Um, my boys really love Roll Doll, uh, so I thought it was a good one to pick up. And it's also into a movie, so I know there's that as well. We also plan on reading Wrinkle in Time, um, but I don't have my copy with me. So that, that it comes out of my birthday, so I'm really excited about that one. Next, I'm planning on picking up, and I might not read this one aloud because they have not read the first one, but I have. This is The War I Finally Won by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Uh, it is the follow-up to The War That Saved My Life that everybody raved about uh, last year or the year before. Um, it's a World War II era novel. Uh, I know that the little girl, um, she had some walking mobility disabilities uh, and goes, her, her mom's not very nice to her. So she and her brother go, uh, as many other children did in World War II, to go stay with another family. And um, yeah, this is about her story. So, and kind of the family that they create. Next is another diverse one. Uh, this one is a graphic novel. It is Child Soldier, uh, When Boys and Girls Are Used in War. Uh, this is written by Jessica D. Humphreys and Michael uh, Chikwani. Uh, Chikwani. Um, this is Michael's story. Uh, I don't think I'll be reading this one aloud. I at least will preview it because it's not very long. Um, I've been wanting to read a narrative like this, um, and I like that it's short. Um, but it is in own voices, so I think that's important. You know how I feel about own voices. Next is one that I actually read a few chapters of and then had to return. <laughs> this is Green, Green Glass House by Kate Milford. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Weston game. A little. There's a house, and they're trying to kind of figure out uh, a secret. Um, they find some papers, and it's kind of like kid detectives a little bit um, these random strangers that all show up in the same house so it's kind of like a clue a little bit too I suppose so um, I think it'll be fun and I know there's a follow-up to this so, and the cover just makes me happy <laughs> um, and also for middle grade March we will be continuing to work on this illustrated prisoner of Azkaban I read this aloud um, maybe half chapter each day uh, with my boys um, and it's just oh Jim K is a perfect illustrator if you ask me Next up are the ones that are not technically middle grade. This one's YA. This is Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman, the follow-up to Scythe. Um, Scythe. I never can say that word right. The S-C-Y-T-H-E. Um, it is a dystopian book. Um, it is, well, dystopian, utopian. There's a land where, land, a future where people have figured out how to conquer death. Nobody dies. And so to curb the population, there is this special class of citizens that go around and kill people um, to keep population at um, a normal uh, <laughs> normal population. Um, and things kind of get out of hand in the first book. So I'm really excited to read this follow-up. I know as soon as I actually open it, 
it will go fast because I'm not going to put it down. Next is another graphic novel, The Silence of Our Friends. The Civil Rights Struggle Was Never Black or White. This is by Mark Long, Jim DeMonicus, and Nate Powell. I'm halfway through this. It's kind of 1960s era. Uh, Vietnam is going on in this. And there are two men, one who is a, a white reporter who's trying to kind of figure out this whole segregation, um, what's going on, and then a, a black man who's trying to kind of fight for his rights. Um, they become kind of unlikely friends. It's been good so far. Um, I'm interested to see how it turns out um, because of the title, The Silence of Our Friends. So, Boys, quiet down a little bit. Next, I don't know if I'll get this before, the library has to get it back. The Line Becomes a River, Dispatches from the Border by Francisco Gantu. Uh, this is about immigration and it's nonfiction and it's one of those issues that's important to me for uh, family reasons, so I'm excited. This one, I have been on the library wait list for six months for maybe. Um, this is by Matt Haig who wrote The Humans, who it, it was, I love that book. The Humans was a great book. How to Stop Time. I have no idea what this is about. I don't care. I know I will read it probably in one sitting. Um, and I'm so excited to pick it up because Matt Haig. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason. And finally, the one that I'm halfway through. I've been buddy reading this with Lucy from Book Acts and Christopher from Books and Jams. This is Jesse Burton's The Muse. It is... Um, between two time frames where there's uh, trying to figure out a mystery about a painting uh, and what's behind it. So I'm really excited about finishing it. Um, I like the writing quite a bit. It's just my head's been so stuffy. It's been hard to focus on the details of this writing. Um, so I haven't been able to pick it up because every time I do, like the words just kind of swirl in my head. <laughs> And, and it's not great. Um, but I really enjoyed it before I got sick. So I can't wait to finish it. And it's been fun discussing it with them. So that is what I am planning on reading in March. That seems insane. Um, because I have a lot on my plate. <laughs> but that's the plan. I would love to hear what you're planning on reading in March. Especially if you're participating in middle grade March. Um, if I have time. I, I kind of want to pick up um, middle March. And work on that book. Uh, that classic. Um, I am also currently still working on the audio version of Roots. I think I'm a third of the way through. I'm slowly going to get there, but it is what it is. And it's been a really great book. I really recommend uh, it, picking up Roots if you haven't before. Uh, it's worth the time investment. That's all for now. Talk to you later. Bye.